about a month ago, Claude dropped a open source agentic coding tool that lives in your terminal. And OpenAI today released their own version of that called the OpenAI Codex. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to set it up on your own laptop. And then I'll be trying out some of its features on my own coding project to see if it's good for vibe coding. OpenAI has followed Claude's direction with this by fully open sourcing the repo. And it already has the same amount of stars as Claude in a day that Claude took about a month to get to. It's basically two to three steps to get things started. So we can open a terminal window and NPM install this globally. I had a node issue. And so if you see any node issues, just make sure you can run brew update, which will take a couple minutes to update your node to the latest version. So when I was able to do that and then run this other code, brew link node at 22, I had to export my path um, that was recommended in the update command. And then I actually had to apply the changes to my terminal. And then I had to recheck that my node version was actually node 22. Okay. So once you're actually able to run codex by running either just the codex plain command or npx, or npx at openai slash codex, you should see a screen like this. And another thing to note is that you have to run this inside a repo. And if you run it outside a repo, it's just really not recommended because you could end up really uh, harming the files on your PC. Okay, and you can see here that the default model is 04 mini and we're in this working directory. And then I just started off with a simple command, explain the code base. And this actually took maybe about a minute to fully run. And it'll give you these status updates that it's thinking for 37 seconds. It's running these commands to actually read certain packages. So it's trying to understand about my dependencies from package.json. It's reading lines as we go. And you can kind of see that it's reading some of the more important files at certain sections. And so this command was running for over a minute. And if we scroll all the way down here, it ran for a total of 109 seconds to get a complete layout of this code base. And this is a mobile app with quite a bit of documents. Um, and then this uh, command out here was uh, basically giving me a full system architecture view, uh, what was going on, the tech stack, uh, the key files, like my database files, uh, how I'm using Supabase for auth, and so on and so forth. The crazy thing is that this was a really expensive uh, command to run, and it actually ended up taking me 53 cents on the 03 mini or the 04 mini model. And so that is a huge cost for almost um, 108, basically two minutes of thinking uh, and running certain tools. But you can see that it did it perfectly. There was no errors. And if you were an early user of the uh, models when they were using tools, they would just run into a lot of errors when calling command line tools, or um, basically any tool that you gave it, it was a super buggy experimental feature. And so to see this actually working without any errors on the first prompt is really promising. One of the also key observations here is that this is not multimodal. So I can't take, let's say a Figma design and paste it into the terminal here. Whereas on the right here, you can see I'm using cursor. I would be able to paste my Figma design in here and allow that to help guide the LLM to helping me recreate my Figma design. I'll say we already have Supabase, Google, Auth. Let's add GitHub authentication to the app. Stylize the icon as well. Okay, it looks like we're done here. Let's see how it did. So my original message was to add GitHub authentication to the app. And I also asked it to stylize the icon. So currently in the app, I have this page to continue with Google. And my message here is to authenticate with GitHub as well. And so you can see here that it's running these outputs so it can get uh, a sense of the code base with this ls command. It's going to ls into the Supabase folder, and that's where I have all my database files. It's reading into some of these files. And then it's also doing a grep command, which is searching for any instance of GitHub in my folders. And it actually searched my docs folder. Uh, and so that is not where it is. And then you can see here, 
it did another grep command to find where I have instances of Google in the Superface login component. And so it's going to see my instances of using the uh, Google auth in my login page. And so that's what this kind of code snippet right here is. And then it's going to read through my components for any of the actual UI components related to Superbase. And so it's actually finding the right uh, component there, reading it, reading it. If it looks for the actual command or the actual function that links my UI component to the backend. Then you can see here, there's an important command here, which is it's applying a patch. And it looks like it's actually adding with these plus signs, all the GitHub code. But you get this apply patch and it shows in green all of this recommended code. So we can say click Y here to apply the command. And uh, you can see here that the Superbase login actually got modified. So I can search GitHub and this is the brand new code right here. And so I'm going to guess that it probably used a similar logic to what I had with sign in with Google. And I'll put in the new code base here on the right. So you can see that it actually matched the exact template that I had with my GitHub function. And it was able to create that entire code snippet here. And it's basically almost the same replica where you can see that it even has retries if the code fails. And then you can see here, it actually proceeded already to the next patch. And I guess patch here is like it's edit file where it's removing some of my comments and actually inserting a, another button here. It looks like uh, in my login component for a GitHub sign-in button right here. So let's just click yes there, let it continue thinking. Okay, it says 327 seconds, but that must be the cumulative total since I started. And so now it looks like our agents has its stop command and it's added the full GitHub auth support. And then it's also giving me the next steps. So I do have to configure some of this stuff in my Superbase project to set up the client secrets. Okay, so let's go check it out in the UI. So there we go. It looks like we actually have the login button with the icon. Let's actually give the button a click to see if everything's working. And it looks like the provider is not enabled, which makes sense because we haven't enabled GitHub client ID. Okay, so let's say that I have a new developer working on the project and they don't actually know what this uh, GitHub client ID is. So I'll ask them for instructions. I don't know what you're talking about. How do I do that? So here we can see a kind of a limitation of it because this is a pretty straightforward question and you don't actually need to read many files to understand this. And if I was asking this in cursor, it probably would get me the answer a lot faster just because it's able to pull from maybe super based documentation and whatnot, but it's able to give me these instructions and I can go do that on GitHub itself. Okay, so not bad for the first test um, in terms of like adding a new UI component. But obviously, still, I have to go into my Superbase dashboard, go into my project itself, and still configure that OAuth myself. And that would do that over. And I'll enable this. And then I'll go to GitHub, as I mentioned, and I'll get all of these secrets. My initial code base question actually took 50 cents. That's in USD, just to ask for about two minutes about what's going on in my code base. And I think that's pretty worth it to me. Like if I'm in a totally new code base, I don't really want to read through all the files to get a lay of the land. So this to me is like not bad. And this is actually their cheaper, cheaper model. So 04 mini is cheaper than 03 by about a factor of 10. And it looks like we ran another 50 cents to implement the GitHub feature. Okay. So overall cost wise, we spent about a dollar in this day. Like I've only spent it on using the O for mini models to implement those two calls. So the first one was explaining the code base. That took about two minutes of reasoning. And the second one was to add a GitHub provider to my auth. And that took about 50 cents. So you could estimate that if you had 20 of these complex coding agent calls, you could do multiply by 50 cents. That's already $10. So if you're running 20 of these in a day, you're already at $10 for a day 
multiply that over a month and you're already at $300. So it's definitely more of an expensive task. Whereas tools like Cursor have like a lot more cheap models that you can swap around with and might be more cost effective if you're uh, wanting to switch between the different types of models. And so the UI for this I can see isn't great right now. Obviously this is just a terminal, terminal command tool where if I have to pass in a model just like this, it's uh, pretty cumbersome. Whereas a tool like Cursor, I can just swap between my agent and ask modes. I can swap between the 3.7 models, use the 04 mini models just with a simple UI like this. All right, I highly encourage you guys to try this out. You can do a lot of things around UI, database migrations, writing unit tests, even explaining what certain snippets in the code space do. Uh, one of the key limitations that I saw was you're not allowed to paste in images, whereas with tools like Cursor, you can get that multimodal um, input by passing in things like Figma designs. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing more of these Codex demos as well as comparing it to the new Claude models for uh, basically like battles between the different agentic coding agents. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I'll see you in the next one.